Hi right, folks, this is part five of the uh, process of spraying the interceptor 650 side panels in as near as I can get to Orange Crush. So I'll start the video by showing the paint spec, which was from Humberside Paints and Products. There are the details. Great bunch of people, they can mix just about any colour on the face of the planet. And they were the people who told me that this is a a two-part paint with a silver base coat. They knew it all. Um, here is the description. So it is Bombay Orange. Now, Bombay Orange. That coincidence, Indian bike. It says it's Honda colour. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. But there it is. Now I shall put a link in the description of that paint. Now I've done, the secret with this paint is what you do is you put your silver base coat on, a couple of coats, and then you apply very thin coats. I'll show you the panels. Now these have not been lacquered yet. So as a colour match, it's pretty bang on. The slight dotty look about it is the metal flakes. Um, so I brought these into cure. Now if you're interested, the way of doing this is you put your silver base coat on and then you give a very light spray with the Bombay Orange, which isn't particularly, doesn't have a lot of pigment in it, as I mentioned before. So don't be tempted when spraying the panels or spraying anything to try to get it to be the colour that we're looking for, because you'll not do it, you'll get runs. So these have got, the technique is to keep doing coats, and once the silver base coat's fully covered, you then proceed carefully and add a coat after a coat, but you have to keep checking with the bike. You have to hold the panels near the bike because if you underdo it, the panels will be too light in colour. If you overdo it, they'll get dark. They'll be darker than the fuel tank. They'll just get darker and darker. So I've done this. I took my little nose fairing off, which is a damn good match for the tank, and I brought it in. I used a daylight bulb in my little workshop to get the colour right and this is about four coats, five possibly. I left 15 minutes between coats so don't be tempted to rush I found. Now I am very very pleased with that result. That to me is a damn good match when you hold it up against the uh, the fairing and that's without the lacquer. The lacquer will bring it down a bit, make it darker and I've got the decals to put on first. Now the decals are applied with water, you know, a bit of soap, washing up liquid. I don't want to be doing that unless I'm absolutely positive that these are cured. So I'm going to leave it now two days. Um, a couple of points worth mentioning I think are as follows. These aerosols have a fantastic nozzle that you can twist this bit round and have it as a fan going that way, or you can have it that way. Now, I've just left it as it came, which means the fan is exactly the same um, angle as the tin. I can't imagine needing to do it any other way, any other orientation. But it's a fantastic nozzle that's really, really good. I think cheap aerosols, um, you get cheap nozzles. So that's got the little spiky bit that sticks down. Now. What I did, after every coat, I removed that nozzle and I plonked it in a cup of thinners. I just used universal thinners from Lidl. They have some great tins in at a couple of quid. Um, last time I went in I bought 10 tins because it's cheap and it's great, you know, it's handy. So after each application, to avoid any dry paint on that very, very fine nozzle there, look, I put it in thinners and 
write this nozzle here, although there's still a little bit on it, but that's just staining more than anything. Um, the other thing to do with this paint, you've got to shake it really well. You've got to agitate it. And when you do, don't spray the panel straight away with it. So when, you, when you're spraying, go from one side to the other. And if I was spraying that tin, for example, with my hand, turn the nozzle on there and let go over here. You don't want to be starting it there because agitate the tin and the, you can feel the gas moves differently. And what you don't want is a splutter. It hasn't done that at all. There were no splatters, splutters. The nozzle hasn't got blocked as you get with cheaper aerosols. Um, so that is the technique. Clean it between coats. Keep monitoring the colour. Don't try to make it go orange straight away. Just keep doing it gradually. And it's a metallic coat, so there's no sanding. You don't sand the silver primer. You don't sand this. What's going to make this really, really glossy is the lacquer. And I don't want to apply the lacquer until I've got the decals on. So I shall put a link, when I do that, I shall put a link to the decal people. And... The light is making it look a bit speckly. It isn't, actually. It's totally smooth. It's just the, the um, metal flakes are, are reflecting the very, very um, powerful lights I've got in my kitchen. They're very, very bright. So I reckon that's about as good a colour match as I can get. It's about the same as my helmet. The helmet's a bit darker than the bike, actually. So these are now going to stay inside. The other thing as well... In, sorry about that. In my little uh, brick wash house, as it used to be, um, I, put a fan, I put a heater in there, a blow heater, and I got it really, really warm in there. It's just an old wash house, and I turned, turned the fan off when I took the panels. I left the panels in there and sprayed them. I did one after the other, put them on those blocks on top of my chest freezer, but it has to be warm and you can't have humidity. It's got to be dry. So outside at the moment is 66% humidity, which is quite high. So I went in the wash house, turned that heater on and got it really, really warm in there. And obviously I didn't point it at the panels because that's a surefire way of something going wrong. So that's it. I am pretty happy with these so far. And... Each of the panels has a very handy lug underneath, right there in the middle, and it's great for holding. So I held those in my hand to spray them. I wore a pair of V's, rubber doodars, vinyl gloves, and if you hold the, each of the lugs that, that actually locate this onto the little black bits that come down with the locking and everything, it's perfect. You do a sort of reverse hold on it. So, the, so that the panel is going up your forearm with gloves on and that's how I did it. You need to spray the edges underneath, you know, a little light spray. So I started doing underneath first, on the edges underneath, and then I did the sides by rotating it in my hand. The other technique that you do is with your spray tin, don't go backwards. You're far better off with a spray can going forwards to get your coat on because if you go forward your overspray is covering an already painted bit so it melts it if you go backwards it's not so good so you go forwards with your painting and follow that contour if you can i sprayed from about uh right i'll tell you what i've sprayed i'll tell you the distance let's have a look about 25 centimetres, if that, probably 20, I reckon 20 to 25 centimetres, so not too far, you don't want to be too far, but you don't want to be too close, and you certainly don't want that nozzle that's got a fan uh, in the same orientation as the tin, if you stop moving it while you're actually on the panel, as I did on the watering can test yesterday, you will get a line of dark pigment. 
So I know this is probably elementary to a lot of people. I don't want to sound patronising or know it all because I've never really done anything. I've done spraying, but not uh, with this sort of stuff. Um, I don't. I don't want to sound like I know it all or that I'm telling anybody what to do. Quite honestly, um, all I'm saying is that that's what I did. You know, and with that watering can test, I just held the nozzle for you know, a fraction of a second in one place, and that was it. Big dark line down it. And of course, there's no going back on that. So if you've got a big dark line down the middle of your panel, you're back to square one, you'd have to sandpaper it all off again. So that is an update. I'll put it in the description, what the paint is. So over the course of these videos, you've got everything you need. Um, I think Humberside Paints probably even post it out, possibly. Um, if anybody wants any, needs any, and Humberside Paints won't send it, just put a message in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll get it for you. Now, the total cost of the plastic primer, the undercoat and the top coat um, was £34. Let me just check the receipt. I'll tell you the exact cost. I like to speak with data. Let's have a look. Yeah. What was it 34? Let's have a look. Am I, am I telling an untruth? Oh, there you go, look. Yeah, it was 31, 34 X VAT. So by the time you pay the VAT, you've got £37.62. So for three, is it three? Three aerosols, yeah. Yeah. Now, I also did a test earlier on the watering can and sprayed a load of lacquer on it, really thick, just to see what it did. And it has left it very, very glossy and nice. So I would say this, if you're going to undertake this project, I would um, practice. There's plenty in the tins. There's, I've only used half. I've used half of each tin. So there's enough left for the next little project, which I'll also be posting a video about. Um, so I would, I would do a test. I'd have your thinners ready in a cup so that you can get the nozzle clean straight away. Give it a really good shake. The other thing I did with the paint tins, I put them next to that. Uh, in that corner where the, where the little uh, box is. And I did that to warm, them, warm the paint up. They didn't explode, it's not dangerous. Some people put them in boiling water in a, in a receptacle, but I just put them there, got it nice and warm, and then straight out to the shed, the warm shed outbuilding, and did that. So there you go, that's an update. The next video will be decals with a with a uh, where you can get them from and the lacquer. So keep your fingers crossed, everybody. I'm doing the best I can here. I hope I don't ruin it. I don't, well, hopefully I won't. So, in the meantime, I hope you uh, find these useful. And as I've said numerous times before, it's not for everybody. It's not to everybody's taste. Some people put black metal louvered sides on them and take the original panels off. I like the original panels on them, actually. I think they're really nice, black glossy ones. Um, and I'm going to have both, if I want to. And I have a few other projects in the pipeline, a couple of really good ones, and I'll be posting videos about those, uh, more of a mechanical nature, um, so I'll be posting them soon. So in the meantime, I hope everybody's enjoying the good weather, fantastic biking weather, and be careful. Watch out for deer. I've just written my brand new electric car off. I hit a deer when I was on cruise control, so I know what speed I was doing. I was doing 70 miles an hour on a dual carriageway and I hit a deer. And it has written my car off, trashed the front end, decimated the deer into pieces all over the road. It went over it. And my one thought was, thank God I wasn't on a motorbike. So look out for the antlers in the hedgerows. I've seen some since then. Statistically, I shouldn't hit another one, but it spooked me. So mind how you go, watch the hedges and uh, watch out for the next video if you're interested. See you later.